I think the Palestinians have a right to their land, resources, and labor, and they are able to democratically organize their society however they see fit, as long as they're in compliance with international laws. As a sovereign people, I think about Palestine, I remember that the International Court of Justice has ruled that the Palestinian people do in fact exist. And as a sovereign people, they are afforded their right to self-determine in the territorial unit that is their country. Third, the territorial unit that is their country is internationally recognized as the Gaza Strip, the West Bank, with East Jerusalem as its capital. And fourth, those rights that are internationally recognized to be given to the Palestinians are denied by a separate apartheid, genocidal ethnostate that was founded on settler colonialism and the racial subjugation of a separate ethnic group and its eventual ethnic cleansing. And I also know that gay marriage is illegal in Israel. Yeah. But no, Israel is the most, you know, moral country. Israel is the most, demo is the only Demo democracy, I can't speak. Israel is the only democracy in the Middle East. It's a bright beacon of Western values. Thank you, Israel, for holding that line out there in the middle of Arab land. Thank God we've got our white people on the doorstep. Doing what they do best, stealing other people's land and culture because they're white and they don't have a culture because they're boring. They're just a missile base. I mean, pretty much. Israel's bombed six different schools in 10 days. And I love when chitty chuds want to say, Hamas hides in the hospitals though. Or Hamas is, was in that mosque. It was a Hamas. It was a Hamas hospital. I mean, unless you think, you know, that Hamas is just must be the dumbest people on the planet to hide in the very buildings that Israel has targeted. 40 years since Hamas was even founded, they've been targeting hospitals and mosques, etc etc destroying their civilization and to think that you know Hamas is uh, smart enough to not hide in the one place where Israel bombs with outright impunity is silly I think does that make sense why would Hamas hide in hospitals do they know I mean do they just want to get blown up if I were Hamas I wouldn't be hiding in hospitals because you know that's where Israel's gonna bomb yeah this is what happens when you inject I mean and you know growing up you hear about the the, the peace in the Middle East. It's like this cliche you hear about, peace in the Middle East, peace in the Middle East. And you never know really, at least I didn't, before I looked into it, but you never really know what it is about. But once you like become a Marxist, I guess, or once you have class consciousness, you sort of see how everything is connected. Palestine's connected to why we have, uh, you know, worker insecurity here at home. But that's another topic. But I would say that Palestine, Palestine teaches us a lot. But I, I, yeah, I think that uh, it's silly to say that in 2024, Hamas is hiding in hospitals. I don't think they've ever hid in hospitals. Yeah, it's very, very xenophobic and racist to be like, well, what about, why don't they, you know, if you go to Gaza, you'll be killed outright. How racist are you? You know, tell me you're, you don't know what you're talking about. Tell me you're just a reactionary, misanthropic, I don't even know if that's the right word, but yeah, just tell me you're a fucking piece of shit. It's true, Islamophobia has been the default setting for decades now. Yeah, they love saying, go to Gaza, just go to Gaza then. Oh, I would love to see you go to Gaza. Um, somebody needs to buy this man a ticket to Gaza. I especially love that one because literally... You are so dumb, you don't realize that Israel is under block- is- You know the thing, man. Has placed Gaza under blockade, and you literally can't go- You can't even fly into Gaza because they don't have an airport because Israel bombed the airport. You have to fly to Tel Aviv. You can't fly to Gaza. Nobody can go take a ticket. The, the IDF will murder you. Of course there's no planes flying over Gaza. The IDF will shoot it down. You'll be mur- Yeah, I would be murdered if I went to Gaza. I'd be murdered by the IDF. We 100%. That's why we gotta show love for our brothers in arms in Hamas fighting for their liberation. If you don't feel like connected to their struggle, I don't know what to say to you. Like, imagine what they're going through. They have been reduced to this and to think that there are people that I walk around and encounter that believe that the Palestinians and Hamas are just backward savages and that's why their civilization is the way that it is, is deeply frustrating and deeply upsetting and deeply offensive to me. You know, what you don't understand is that hum Hamas 
did not need to radicalize any civilians. Um, when, when you see the, the the CIA's argument here, one thing I've seen was Hamas is wears civilian clothing, so that could endanger civilians, like logically. Okay, well, on the flip side, before we even get into that nonsense that you just said, the flip side of that is the IDF kills its own civilians, and the IDF murders. Gazan civilians outright, uh, and there's a whole bunch of evidence to the contrary in regards to human shields, um, etc., etc. Okay, it's it's all projection from the IDF. Okay, who do, who's guilty of all those things? And me, meanwhile, there's really no conclusive evidence, convincing evidence that Hamas uses human shields. And now you're saying, well, you're basically blaming a third world armed resistance group for not having uniforms when they literally aren't allowed clothes to wear. You know, that's the silliness of your argument is that these people are denied clothing. You expect them to be a well-organized and funded militia capable of pincer movements with coordinated military, you know, movements, what have you. I'm not a military strategist, but it doesn't take a five-year-old to understand that, you know, you can't, you know, hold the way the poor fight to resist their own subjugation and annihilation. You can't hold that to the same standards of the rules enshrined by the rich who have all the sources and funding and can follow. In order for Hamas to follow the conventions of war, they should sooner lay down and die and not fight in the first place because what you're basically saying is you have no ability you have no right to even fight in any way that you can possibly muster because in order to fight you must be precise in order to be precise you must have precise weaponry in order to have precise weaponry you need a lot of money and money is the one thing that's denied among many other things in the Gaza Strip including food including clean water including clothing which you're telling me is, you know, a fault of Hamas for not having, and like, it's documented that Hamas does not have enough uniforms for all of its, you know, combatants. So some aren't able to even wear, uh, you know, any sort of distinguishing uniforms. Uh, secondly, do you think that Palestinian kids born after 2005 or even before who came of age in the past 15, 20 years needed any radicalization from Hamas to fight Israel? Or do you think that Israel radicalized the civilians living in Palestine to fight? These people are being illegally occupied. They are denied systematically any form of institutionalization, any form of organization that includes having a military, that includes having an army, that includes having uniforms, that includes having weapons, that includes having an air force, that includes having a navy, that includes having satellites and laser-guided precision missiles. These people are, have 90% of their economy has been reduced to what is known as a tunnel economy. In fact, it's more, it's more than 90%. Most of the economy, something close to 100% of the economy, is smuggled in through tunnels from Egypt. And you're going to have the bravery, tell me, they should fight war a little bit more refined. You're going to look at a starving man sitting at the dinner table, and you are going to admonish him for his manners. There was a bunch of international aid that went into Gaza before October 7th and were offered jobs by Israel. Your take on that? Here's my take on that. Here's another question. Why is it that Gaza's entire economy, why is it that 80% of the inhabitants of Gaza before October 7th relied entirely on foreign handouts, which you call international aid? Why is a sovereign country dependent for their survival on the charitable acts of goodwill from the international community? What's your take on that? My take on that, which you just asked, is that since 1967, the entire world has unanimously agreed that Israel is in violation of international law and is committing a war of aggression against the Gaza Strip, the West Bank, and East Jerusalem for its illegal settlements, for its illegal wars. What's your take on Operation Protective Edge? What's your ta take on Operation uh, Cast Lead, uh, which further gave rise to the need, the necessity for a tunnel economy? What's your take on all that? And to the jobs you're speaking of? Yes, it's true. Israel bribed the Palestinians with something like 10,000 or 20,000 work permits so that they could have the privilege of reappropriating what was stolen from them in the first place 
which was their land, their resources, and their labor. Now, and this is what Sarah Roy illustrates in her book, The Gaza Strip, The Political Economy of De-Development, whereby Israel de-institutionalized, in, in, integrated their economy, integrated the Gaza Strip's economy, and externalized the Gaza Strip and its economy. And what does that mean? That means they took their resources, they took control of their resources, their land and their labor, and they made these Palestinians now go to Israel for it. Now, in order for Palestinians to appropriate what is already under international law recognized as being theirs, they have to plead to their king. They have to plead to their master, Israel, for basic human survival needs. And that is what Israel has done to the Gaza Strip in the form of externalization, which is one factor of what Sarah Roy calls the political economy of de-development. And I would invite you to read that book before you speak and open your mouth here, so that you could enlighten yourself, because you're asking the wrong question. What should be obvious to you is not. And, um, you know, what amounts to a bribe of 20,000, let's just say it's 20,000 work permits. If it's more than that, it can't be much more. And we're talking about 2.3 million people. So 20,000 people have the privilege of not living in abject squalor and have the privilege of entering into the, the great state of Israel to gain access to their abundant human rights, their abundant resources, which they've stolen quite openly from the Palestinians themselves. So that is a bribe, which amounts to something like 1% or less than of the entire Gazan population. So to say that Israel is such a benign and, and what, wow, just how gracious of a state is Israel for allowing these 20,000 Palestinians a work permit to go work in Israel. Yeah, I mean, and I think that's what it goes back to. The overarching framework to this geopolitical event has to boil back down to the illegal occupation. It begins and ends with the act of aggression that Israel has committed an egregious supreme international crime against the Palestinians. And that is, formally, it goes back to 1967, and I would argue that it goes back to 1948 and then even beyond, uh, you know, in the history. Back to 1917. I mean, it's been an ongoing, been, it's just like a slow-moving, you know, genocide. It's a slow, low cost, they call, you know, they call it. Or maybe I call it. I don't know. But it's a slow Holocaust. It's a slow Holocaust. And um, I had another point, but I forgot it. And here's my cat. Well, there's, there, you know, looking into both sides is like saying I'm looking into the slave masters and I'm looking into the slaves side of the story. I just want to hear both sides, okay? I just want to see, maybe the slave master has some points. I need to go listen to the slave master and see. Let me go see if Hitler, what does Hitler think? Okay, now let me listen to the Jews. Mm-hmm. You know, Hitler did have uh, some good points, actually. Jews, uh, do you care to comment? What do you think? You did, uh, why weren't you wearing a uniform? Why weren't you wearing your uniform that day, Jews, when you revolted against the Nazis? If you had just distinguished yourself, though, I think we can all agree that he, you wouldn't be in violation of the customs of war, okay? That's another thing. We're holding them to the, the, uh, the pretense that this is a war and they must follow the rules of war. No, it's not a war, they're being ethnically cleansed. They are fighting against their own annihilation. Not even Gandhi, the world's most famous pacifist, would condemn Hamas. That's because Gandhi understood what few understand here today, which is that when you are facing your own annihilation, you must fight back, claw, whatever you can muster almost like you're you know think about a rape victim you're gonna you're gonna um i shouldn't say that the r word but think about grape victims are you gonna condemn a grape victim because they're fighting back even though they know that it's, maybe they're powerless okay because they scratched their aggressor in the eye or something uh it's it's sort of you know so i think understand the power dynamic here and that will refrain you from acting like a jackass in the public sphere understand the power differential. Have you no soul? Why would you blame slaves? They've been deinstitutionalized from society. They have no access to any resources and you're going to hold them to the standards enshrined by rich people. You're going to hold them to rules of society, of polite society, when they have been the victims of polite society. You're going to hold them to the standards of, you know, it's sort of like, if only these 
Palestinians had Western values, okay? They're just, uh, they're, the Hamas is trying to destroy Western civilization. Well, that's really cute of you that you want to hold them to the standards of Western civilization when it's Western civilization, which has been their greatest, you know, tyrannical oppressor. Why would they want to envy, envy or look or, you know, take on any sort of cultural values that we possess? Look at what we're doing to them. Yeah, if you just took it, you took the beating a little bit nicer, it probably wouldn't have been so bad, okay? It's really your fault. You know, October 7th, it's like, you, wow, you really lashed out. It's like a gaslighting thing, right? It's like when the, the oppressor, like, does some crazy offensive thing and then you have a negative reaction or you get defensive or something. Like, oh, why are you doing that? Whoa, okay. Well, now you've upset me, and now I'm going to meet that with worse violence. And, and that's your fault for putting me in that position. It's like, didn't Golda Meir, isn't there some, I don't know if it's an apocryphal quote, but didn't Golda Meir say that we will never forgive the Palestinians for making us murder their children? Something to that effect. But those are the vibes. Very gaslighty. Everyone condemns the killing of innocent civilians, Mr. CIA. But if you want to, if, if the point is, if you want to blame Hamas, if you, if you want to look at Hamas for killing what you call innocent civilians, which I would also take issue with, but if you want to, if you want to blame Hamas for that, uh, then you should do what international law does. You should blame Israel. Because international law sees what you don't see. The entire world community somehow has understood something that you can't understand, which is that reprisals born against an illegal occupying force are the fault of the occupier and not the occupied. Don't occupy people. Don't ethnically cleanse people. Don't savagely murder village after village, community after community, women, children, men, for decades. Don't Build your home next to a volcano and then act shocked when there's lava in the living room. That was George Carlin, actually. I didn't say that. Nixon ordered Cambodian genocide. Clinton sent cruise missiles to Sudan. People died. Obama gave the orders to do drone strikes.